had a little incident down in Macon last year that kind of brought something to my attention and kind of coincided with what the agency was looking to do. We had a uh, <coughs> school called Progressive Christian Academy that um, hired some individuals uh, to po supposedly to be employees at the school. Uh, currently now is any employee or any, any employee of a child care agency is required to have uh, what's called a GCIC, which is a background check in Georgia, basically to see if there's been any crimes committed in Georgia. So every time you have an employee, um, uh, they have a background check to make sure. But, and if they're a director or run a daycare agency, they um, have to have a fingerprint, a biometric uh, background check to see if there's any crimes committed in other states. Um, well, this particular school um, brought in an individual uh, basically to run the school uh, but uh, called them an employee and didn't name them the director of the school and, and um, come to find out later down the road um, because the national background report check wasn't done that this person had two counts of felony check fraud in Florida uh, and also had an alias. And, uh, and so it raised the question of, okay, well, why, why would we not, if we're, if we're really interested in the best interest of the children of these licensed daycare centers, not do... Uh, as extensive a background check as possible and as efficiently as possible uh, and, and, and at the same time the folks from uh, DECAL um, uh, came to me, the Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning came to me and said uh, would you be interested in carrying a piece of legislation that would require uh, all employees of daycare, licensed daycare facilities in our state to undergo a national background check or a biometric background check rather than just a Georgia background background check background check and so that is the purpose of this bill Mr. Chairman and members of the committee that's uh, the nuts and bolts of it we can walk through the uh, language which I know um, you guys like to do we'll be able to do that uh, as much as we can we're basically looking at a cost of a uh, Georgia background check around $35 I think it's currently uh, pretty much what it is now and the, the biometric uh, cost is additional probably about $15 uh, to do that and, that cost will be borne uh, either by the employee or the employer to be determined. Um, the market would probably dictate that the employer would pay for that in most cases. Um, but it's a it's a, a attempt to make sure that we have folks that are working with our children in our state um, have the most extensive background check possible to make sure that they uh, we're checking for offenses that these folks may have from other states uh, in other states that would not have been uh, discovered in a normal uh, Georgia background check, and so that's the heart and intent of the bill. I'd like to know what's the policy of the department today, either in law or in policy? What's the goal of the bill? Is it the intent that somebody who has written a bad check in Florida and been popped for it may not work in a clinic or in a, in a, in a child care facility of any kind? Or is it the goal just to bring the mandate, the awareness, so that there is a, a sort of above the board determination made? Um, where are we today and where do you want to go with the bill? Uh, yeah, yeah, let me address that and I'll turn it over to Ray. The, 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 the goal and intent is, is right now, if you're an employee uh, at any level of daycare center, you're required to uh, have a Georgia background check done on you to see if there's crimes uh, committed within the state. And uh, the goal is to get to uh, where every employee um, would have a national fingerprint. If you're a director, you're required to have a national background check and a biometric. And so that's, that's the goal. We've given some time frame. This wouldn't start until January 2014, only for new employees, employees after that time. For existing employees, they'd have until 2017, January 1 of 2017, to have the uh, background check to give some time. Because of turnover, that probably will mean that a lot of them, um, <coughs> existing employees may not be required to have that until that time. So, And then, uh, then it'd be up to a five year, every five years having a uh, check as well. So, uh, you want to add to that? He, he's covered that very well. Um, the only thing I want to add to part of your question about the covered crimes, there are currently specific crimes in the code that would exclude someone from working in a child care center regardless of the type of background check. And with the exception of one, what I'll refer to as an administrative change, which we'd be glad to discuss, we're not really changing, changing this. The goal is the primary intent is just to require that fingerprint-based check to close the loophole of any out-of-state convictions that wouldn't show up. As current law is, it means any felony... Um, certain misdemeanors, that being simple battery when the victim is a child, uh, contributing delinquency of a minor, and then any sexual offense, anything under Title 16-6, which 
would make you unsatisfactory. <coughs> However, to go on to that further, every single one of those crimes has a right to mitigation under 20-1A-43. That What that is is goes through before the Office of State Administrative Hearing. The State Administrative Hearings Officer has a right to review that history that you have and issue mitigation does not negate the crime that you committed in any fashion. However, it is a statement by the court that that specific offense does not preclude you in any way from working with children. Um, there's a process that Representative Pete alluded to that, that existing employees are going to go through. They're going to get their prints. You're going to run those things. If you find that there's, across the state, maybe 37 employees in 26 different facilities that, that you find out have been working illegally, um, they were never flagged because there was no process that would have flagged their out-of-state offenses. How's that going to get handled? I'm not playing to stump the chump. I'm just this is just a legitimate question. How do you handle that? Um, I, I think that as long as once they did receive the fingerprint-based background check, and as long as after they got that letter that they were no longer satisfactory and they ceased employment, I think they would be in compliance with the law. I don't think there's any immunity language, but they would be in compliance with the law. Is that, is that correct? Right. And the situation it would have no negative uh, effect uh, on the facility. I want to make that clear because the facility would not, unless they had reason to know the out of out of state information, um, they would not know. So what we would do is we would inform the uh, facility and the individual, and we use language such that that person can be present while children are present for pay. So we try to stay aware from that they can't be employed because they can be the bookkeeper and get books or they can be the gardener or things like that. So they can still be on the payroll, they just can't be present there while children are there. So then we say that that person at that point can't be there and they have to go through that mitigation process. But we, we do not have any immunity language in there. I mean, they, they, would, they would in effect be terminated. They would be given a, they could be put in a situation where they're not working with the children right. yeah. on a daily basis and would have an opportunity to appeal, to have that mitigated. Uh, but I guess if they were to come back that there, there was a crime, they would not be allowed to be able to work at that facility. Is that and it is a rather right quick process to get that turned uh, over as well. And also to your question, I don't think that provider would be held legally liable if they didn't have any reason to know about the conviction that was out of state. I get that. I guess I'm just, is, is, that a, is that a consideration that, um, <coughs> that we make as we, as, we, as we think through this? People that you get hits, if, if, if upon discovery of this, I mean, maybe, maybe that's, that's too fine of a detail, but I, I just ask it parenthetically. So. And we're certainly open to it if that's what we need to do. Is we do similar checks if we got a hit under the current law. We have the right at any time to ask someone to do a national background check. Even though employees don't have the right, shouldn't go through a local. We at any time, if we have reason to doubt the local or have the ability, or we find out that something happened out of state, we have the right to then ask, and we don't give immunity. We still go forward with the same process we're talking about. Now. So, or if someone commits a crime and it's discovered, then do they go to a mitigation process they right do. now? They do, so sometimes we get a, a complaint that comes in that someone says, I know a provider went to New York and committed a crime. If we have reason to believe per current code, we could then, only then, ask for them to get a fingerprint check, and then we do the same process you're exactly asking about now. And then you find out about it, and then what happens? We go through the mitigation process. We tell them that they cannot be present in the facility unless and until mitigation is granted. And if they did something dumb, they're going to find out through mitigation that they can't be mitigated, and they're going to get terminated. That's right. That's right. There's a good chance that there would be employees who would lose their jobs yeah. once they have a national background check. Uh, yeah. Existing employees, that's correct. Yeah. And but quite frankly, that's the intent of the law. True. Is to make sure that we don't have somebody who would have a True. particular heinous crime uh, from another state. Where is the uh, where's the piece in here that speaks to the deadline to get every on line 400 person? by no later than January 4, 2017. Is there a reason we're taking three and a half years to do that? We, we had a good, healthy discussion with the Child Care Association. I think they're here to testify today as well, too. Just make sure it wasn't a, um, too much of a, a, a cost burden to the. I mean, we have what um, almost 6,300 child care programs in the state, mm -hmm. and over 350,000 children. Sure. And, and to do it all at once or within the next 12 could potentially be a financial burden on these small businesses. Or, important to our state so and to balance that with want to make sure to keep our children safe so um, and that was kind of the compromise that we struck.
Okay. We have spent, I cannot tell you how many hours, um, negotiating this compromise very carefully. Um, and we represent 700 child care centers. There are over 3,000 child care centers across the state. I cannot promise you that you won't hear a little pushback from one of your centers, but I think the most important thing you should tell them is every single one of our five border states requires this already, requires fingerprint background checks of all employees. We certainly don't want to be the donut that attracts uh, convicted felons because they have access and easy employment here. Um, and so we uh, worked with the department in, in the child care industry in bad times you have 30 to 50 percent turnover annually in good economies good lord willing if that ever comes back you can have a hundred percent turnover annually in your uh, child care association given that we've already lost a thousand child care centers debt due to the economy the commissioner was very sensitive to the fact that taking on of giving us a small amount of time in our minds three years to get all of our current employees done plus any new employee when you recognize that you've got 30 to 50 percent turnover you're going to be getting new employees um, pretty regularly so um, he was very gracious about that because it will be a significant economic impact but it's one that we certainly feel is worth it the crimes that are being considered are certainly not I don't think any center would want someone working in their center knowing that they had committed one of these crimes around children. And we know that um, child predators are attracted to situations where they can have access to children. Certainly, our members care about taking care of children and they're there for the safety and education of children. So we really want to thank the department um, and wholeheartedly endorse and support this legislation. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Polly. I'm with Voices for Georgia's Children. We are a child um, policy and advocacy organization. Um, and we come to support HB 350. Um, we believe that the current process using only the state criminal background check is insufficient, an insufficient safety net for kids. Um, the state checks, from what we understand, are based on names and social security numbers, which obviously means that somebody can game the system <coughs> and can use a false identity to get work um, in our <coughs> child care centers. Um, and what's more, Georgia's K-12 system uses a national background check for its employees, and we feel like that just because you're five and older in K-12, there's not a reason not to do it for five and less, um, and less in K-12. And from what we understand, 26 other states also do national background checks for their birth to five population. Um, and the biggest point I'd really like to make is that I think it's really important to remember that kids who are zero to five, ages zero to five, cannot always articulate when they're being abused and neglected. And so you don't really have any kind of reliable ability for a kid to, to say, you know, something bad has happened. And um, I just urge your support, HP 350. Questions? No questions? Thank you.